Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Got some more Ben Baller to do tonight. 12 box, pick your team at 10. All card ship, a lot of nice stuff here. So big thanks to, big thanks to this group for making it happen. Appreciate it here on a Thursday. Got D'Lo with double last ball mo, triple last ball mojo. Thanks to him for finishing this off. Let's pop this case open. Let's see what we got. boxes here. Pick your team 10. Good luck to everybody. <clears throat> Let's, uh... That's not the game I want to watch. This is the game, Arizona State at UCLA. It's time to start getting into not only baseball mode, but <clears throat> college basketball mode. Selection Sunday, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after that. Yeah, are we, are we gonna find some supers in here? I hope so. Yeah, one of one overs. If you want to take the over, we had set the line at three and a half. The over is now probably two, two, plus 250. Although we are doing that dynasty a little bit later. I mean, there could be, there could be two in there, or two right there, maybe even three. is up 59 43 with 10 minutes left in the game I think if, if they win a couple more games here I'm pretty sure that you know, they're looking at a number one seed in the tournament in the March Madness tournament not sure how what they're how deep they could go but From my understanding, they're they're a cohesive team. A lot of these guys have been playing together for three or four years, <clears throat> but size is going to be an issue for them. If they run into bigger teams, that's going to be be a problem. Yeah, that top dynasty stuff definitely bananas. box ripped open. Now remember just as a reminder the autos in here few and far between. We're not going to see more than one or two autos per case but the reason why everyone's doing this is because we want to look for parallels like this. Luis Robert to 99 that'll be for Chris Perrin and the White Sox and Rollins and Contreras to 75 for Steven and the Pirates.
There's Tony Santillan. 14 out of 50. That's going to go to the Red Legs. That'll be for John. Ronald Acuna Jr. Riding low insert. One of my favorites from this set. Jacob deGrom to 99 for the Mets. That'll be for Ryan Harold. Not, not his favorite player. Here is Mike Trout, 47 out of 50. If you look at Mike Trout's 2022 numbers, Man, if if he if he wasn't out for like a month, I feel like he would have been he would have been battling Aaron Judge down the stretch. For sixty home runs. Now that that would have been. I mean, the Aaron Judge's chase for sixty plus was was amazing. But imagine if there was two people and a, and a star like Mike Trout in on that race. But alas, no, it did not happen. Does Aaron Judge hit 50 ever again? Yeah, I remember last summer. Yeah, I remember last summer when people, when Trout was out for a little bit, people were selling on Mike Trout. I was like, talk, I mean, you can tell who the casuals are in the in the hobby, or who, or people who just can't stomach, you know, downturns in a market. I don't know how many. I don't know how many people sold too early on trout. So Aaron Judge hit 52 his rookie year, his full season, 2017. And then, you know, due to, due to injuries and whatnot, only 27 his second year over 112 games, 27 his third year, third full season, 102 games. And the next season was, a pan was the pandemic season. Then, um, then almost his first full healthy season, 148 games as had 39 home runs and then it popped he popped off at 62 home runs last season almost winning the triple crown um, I don't know what, what does he do for an encore I say he gets about like 40 home runs but I wonder if he if he would ever if he would ever hit the uh if he ever hits 50 or 60 even ever again most exciting chase to beat a record are you saying of all time or like what what i just would think would be a fun record to, to see being broken i do do the fantasy baseball deal -o. i only play i only do one or two leagues but the main one that i look at is a is a 16 team keeper league an auction league it's a really really competitive one it's pretty tough i've won the league once 
many years ago and have come a little close since, but not recently. Tristan with the Cubs gets the Ian Happ. Yeah, you know, initially I wasn't a huge fan of the auction draft. But now I personally think that's the that's the that's the best way to play. You know, you just you just don't you just don't uh have the luck of the draft position to help you, especially with like the NFL. You don't have like the luxury of a draft position to just fall to have a player fall into your lap. Now you're actually thinking, hey, who are the players that I think had Torkelson base, by the way, goes to Stephen Carney. Then you guys start thinking, um, you guys start thinking, man, who uh, who do I really value and by how much? And then you, then you get some sort of a salary cap that you're trying to work around. It gives you a little more GME kind of feeling. Nice Julio Rodriguez die cut for the Mariners. That's going to go to Tristan. Right, yeah, and our keepers, like, they increase a little bit in value. Their contract increases in value each season. You keep them as well. Yeah, I do think if there was a – that's what, that's kind of what I was getting to, Mike Tower, about, about record chasing. Yeah, like, it's – imagine if, you know, we, we saw how exciting the McGuire-Sosa run was. So imagine if – Aaron Judge had Mike Trout chasing him. Eight out of 99, Bobby Witt Jr., Royals, Jose. Like, that would be pretty exciting, you know, to see to see two, uh, two players. Yeah, I mean, at the time, it was extremely exciting. It was cool to see Aaron Judge, you know, do his thing. That was amazing. But if there was a second player involved, especially like Mike Trout on the West Coast, Aaron Judge on the East Coast, you know, that would do, you know, like baseball would have loved it because, you know, Aaron Judge would be playing on the East Coast, right? He'd hit a home run and then everyone would be like, all right, time to watch, time to watch the Angels on the West Coast. You'd have people staying up late seeing if Mike Trout's going to hit one if they were trading home, if they were trading homers back to back. I think when it comes to individual records, you, you almost always want to see multiple people like chasing it. I'm trying to think of the dynamics for another sport to do it so similar, or like record chasing, you mean? I suppose if it's like Basketball is a little weird just because there's so many points that are scored. Like total points, like it just seems kind of just kind of an almost like an arbitrary number. It's like kind of like thinking about what the national debt is, you know. It's like, okay, cool, it's that number, but I have no context for that number. <laughs> but like baseball is unique in that, you know, the statistics are such that that almost in any era, you know that if adding 300, right? Whether you're in the 1920s or the 2020s, you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. If a batter can hit 300 throughout the season, like we know those numbers. Those, we know those numbers by heart. 100 RBIs. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, when you're talking about 30, 40 doubles, you're like, yeah, that's good. You know, you know what a 20 homer player is like. You know what a 30 homer player is like. 40 homers, 50 homers. Like you kind of see those, you kind of see like those milestones that everyone kind of has ingrained in their head since childhood. So I think there's also history involved that, that helps that as well. And, and for the most part, baseball hasn't really changed very much in its entire existence. Whereas fundamental parts of the game of basketball and football have changed like the forward pass in the football a three-point line in basketball you know the 
the baseball has pretty much been the same, the same game. So that's why these records are, are, are kind of fun to chase and are so ingrained in our heads and hallowed in a way. Yeah, like rushing title, I guess is kind of a similar chase. It's a similar vibe. You don't think Gretzky's? Uh, you don't think Gretzky's ninety-two goals in this season would ever be? How close is? How close has the next person gotten in the last? In the last like 15, 20 years, there's Ian Happ to fifty. Baseball. Matt's thinking 92 will fall. Brett Hall had 86, so it's not... Oh, and Redemption, nice. Elo Jimenez to 75. That'll be for the White Sox. That's going to go to Chris Parent. So the closest in recent memory was was Ovi in 07 with 65. I feel like, hmm, Matt's, the, Matt's saying that eventually it'll fall. I feel like there's more goals being scored in the NHL in general, year over year, right? In the last 10, 15 years. There's Rangers edition of Isaiah Kiner Falefa to 25. That'll be for Samuel and the Texas Rangers. Alexander Wells to 99 for the O's. That'll be for Daniel. It's Alex Bregman, 8 out of 75 for the Astros. Yeah, forever, forever, ever. Forever, ever. Mark has the Astros. It's definitely a long time. I mean, people didn't think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's career points record would ever, ever fall. And, and LeBron knocked that out. What are, so, what are, then, what are some unbreakable records, you think, across any sport? Maybe leaning more baseball just because it is a baseball break. All right, behind Seth Beer. Congratulations, someone is due to receive an orange refractor parallel autograph of of Mike Trout and the Angels. We were just talking about him. That goes to Rob and the Angels. Congrats. Nice. Yeah, that's true. Complete games. Pitching, complete games. All those complete games records, that, that's, that, those are never going to fall. Logan thinks Ricky Henderson stolen bases, career stolen bases. Yeah, that probably is not, that's not going to fall anytime soon. You know, the pitching has become so specialized now. Relief pitchers coming in earlier and earlier. Openers are, are happening too, yeah. And so all those related, right? So like all the related stuff to that as well with fewer innings being pitched by, by starters, you know. I think maybe like career, like starting pitchers hitting like a 300 win mark, 
200, 250, 300 win, win mark. I don't think you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, like Cal Ripken Jr.'s uh, consecutive game streak. I don't think, I don't think that's going down. What about hit streak? DiMaggio's hit streak. Is that going down in baseball? I feel like that, I mean, that's a crazy record. But I feel like that could happen. And I'm talking within a single season, not, not wraparound. Brett Favre's 300 inceptions ever being broken, says Logan. Probably not. You have to have a combination of a quarterback that can have the opportunity to throw, throw that many interceptions. So, which would be kind of a crazy combo. I guess if you, if you I guess Jameis Winston could probably do, just keep blowing Jameis Winston out there. I used to think that that hit streak would never happen. You know, the hit streak record would never be broken. But now I'm starting to think, could it be? Oh, easy, Matt Wood. Easy. Brett Favre most embezzled state funds. Is that, is that record never going? He's being pretty litigious about that, Matt. He might come after you. He might sue you. Don't sue me, Brett. Yeah, don't, don't, sue, don't sue Matt Wood. Come on. He's not wrong. Don't sue me. Don't sue me. Don't sue me. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. There's Brandon Lowe. Brandon Lau, that is. Nate Lowe, Brandon Lau. Uh, Tim and the Rays. Trevor Larnock to 99 for the Twins. That's going to be for Daniel. Did the Buccaneers really lose 26 football games in a row? I feel like there. I feel like a team could beat that. <laughs> I feel like a team could do that. Anthony Young's consecutive loss rate. How many? How many? Was it twenty losses? Eighteen losses? Something like that. Pitcher Anthony Young. Man, that that. I mean, that's just some bad luck. It was Mitch Hanniger and Jose Abreu to 10. Chris Perrin and the White Sox. But the thing is, like, I don't know. How many of those win? I, we we got to take a look at this at some point. We got to investigate this. Tristan with Mitch Hanniger to 75. And Spencer Torkelson to 50. Nice. And that... Wood border design from the late 80s. That's going to go to Stephen Carney and the Tigers. Like, he must have been pitching decently enough for them to keep rolling him out there. But not well enough to get wins. But well enough, pitching well enough to get, like, decisions. We gotta we gotta gotta look at the Anthony Young game log. Cause it's like kind of like a weird it's just sort of a weird sort of thing. Well, I don't know if it was twenty in a row, but it was like 
It was almost that bad, yeah. He went 2-14 in 1992 and 1-16 in 1993, both with the, uh, the Mets. But they gave him starts, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of the crazy part. Although some of them were... Looks like some of them were in relief. But I don't know. The fact that they still gave him 121 innings in 1992 and 100 innings in 1993. Like, it's just like they just kept rolling him out there. 72 out of 99, Hoy Park. Uh, Pittsburgh, that's going to be for Stephen. Stephen Carney. It's sort of like, uh, it's sort of like James Winston in the 30-30 club. 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. Like, it's a weird – anyone with that many interceptions, like you're never going to get to that many interceptions because when you're trending that way, you're, you're going to usually be benched as a QB. But when you're also matching that with touchdowns, it, I mean, it gets weird. All right, another box. It's a wraparound record, but Chris Davis going 54 consecutive at-bats without a hit. Yeah. Doesn't LeBron have a bad set right? Set right? Yeah. Guess what, Matt Wood? LeBron leads, leads the uh, NBA in career points. Also leads the NBA in career turnovers. I'm pretty sure he does. I'm pretty sure he has the record in career turnovers. Which is kind of fun. I mean, I, I guess if you play in the league long enough, you're going to have some good records, you're going to have some bad records. That'd be. I feel like that's uh, that's a classic. Like any any like LeBron haters classic lines. Like yeah, well, yeah, not that impressive. He also leads the leads the NBA all time turnovers. <laughs> We're like all right, fair. And Chris Davis though that that's that's kind of a that's sort of a rough one. I mean, because sometimes like that's that's just mental at that point, right? Where, like, you know, hitters will say, like, yeah, even the most confident hitters will be like, yeah, sometimes it creeps in your head. You go over 4, you go over 8, you start pressing, then you think you're never going to be able to hit again, and then, then that just cascades and compounds. So imagine going over whatever Chris Davis went at the end of the previous season. Now think about the storyline as soon as spring training starts, as soon as we get closer to opening day. Hey, Chris, every reporter, every fan, every player, hey, hey, you know, like, gotta get a hit first day, right? You know, like, so the pressure to even get a hit the first day, you know, then, then you're just, that gets in your head. Then you go O for opening day, O for the second day, O for the series, and then that just cascades and compounds. Oh, that's, that's got to, that's got to get in your head. There's Josh Donaldson to 99 for the Twins. Chris Davis, Joey Gallo, Cody Bennett, record drop-off. You want to throw Yelich into that, that group too? Although, you know, as a former Dodger, former fan of, uh, you know, a fan of Cody Bellinger, I feel like injuries maybe kind of gone in the way. But those other guys, did any of those other guys, Chris Davis, Joey Gallo, did they carry injuries? I think they just dropped off. That's for Tim and the Rays. Eric Gagne's consecutive saves record. Yeah, Yelich, I think, is injuries as well. But this guy, I think, just got the opportunity. Maybe there were some injuries. 
Maybe there were some injuries there as well, but here's Mike Trout, blue. Six out of 75, it's gonna go nice with that auto. Rob and the Angels. Matt Manning goes to Stephen Carney and the Tigers. 75. We got Matt Chapman for the A's, A's addition to 50. Eighty-four consecutive saves. It's a lot of saves. That's that's at least that's what two seasons worth of saves. Jed Lowry to 75. Mike Towers saying, what about, what about 10 points in an AHL game? Could that be broken? Jed Lowry to 75 and a Freddie Freeman die cut to 99. Dodgers, Daniel. D'Lo thinks maybe like a Leafs game or a Oilers game. Something like that. Yeah, Matt's thinking maybe like Oilers. You know, some yeah, like a wild 10 9 sort of game. I mean, that's like a. Right, but you. You can't just get 10 points just goals wise, right? I feel like, I feel like you got to have a decent team around someone you can. where you can get the space for goals. And there'll be other threats where you're going to pick up some assists. And then you get that sort of like that 10-9. And then the other team has to keep scoring, right? So because because for you to keep scoring, so yeah, 10-9 game. That's where that's what it where, where it would be. It'd be something like that, a high scoring game. There's Gallo to 15. Speaking of Joey Gallo, Yankees edition going to Tristan. Yeah, it'd be something like that, right? Connor, yeah, Connor McDavid, four goals, six assists. Yeah, you still you still have dry side as a teammate. Yeah, that could be the one. And you you've seen how fast they can score. Like they can, I've seen Connor McDavid score within like the first minute of the game or something like that. So you can bang out those numbers pretty quickly if the conditions are just right you know like if that if that's if that net is looking like a soccer goal for Connor McDavid he's just kind of in that zone and then he runs into a team that's like in a bad slump you know a team where the where the where the goalie's just in a bad slump and the Oilers don't like defending anyway, so they're, they'll give up goals. So Connor will still have to keep pressing on offense. Yeah, that's the formula right there. When are the Oilers playing the Coyotes? When's the, when's the next Oilers Coyotes match? Now maybe the Coyotes are not powerful enough offensively to keep pouring in goals. Maybe it just has to be kind of like a mid of 500 club. 500 hockey team where the goalie's just, just in a bad slump that week. Does Connor McDavid finish out his career in Edmonton? Right, yeah, it can't be a blow, you're right. So it would have to be. You have to. Where, where Connor would still have to be aggressive. Or the Oilers team would still have to be aggressive.
imagine that? Get straight to the Kings with Marty McSorley. I mean, there would be a. There would there would be some old Oilers fans who would who would just who would just drop dead. They they didn't think twice in their lifetime something like that could ever happen. Some some would drop dead. Jared Kalanick to 99. If he can get a reliable goalie, I think he could stay, but imagine McDavid in a big market. Yeah, imagine if, like, like Mike Trout is on the Angels, you know, and, you know, and for for more veteran players, he's he's still consistently one of the and even his rookie cards, right? It's still consistently one of the top top guys value-wise in the hobby. Dodgers trade Turner going to D'Lo. Now imagine if if Mike Trout was a Yankee. Oh, there's the super. Super, super, Cabrian Hayes. One of one. Stephen Carney with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nice. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. We had said D'Lo set the one of one line at three and a half. That's one. Yeah, the over is now uh, down from over is now down from plus two fifty. It's now down to plus one twenty. If you're into that sort of thing. Is the under still like uh, under three and a half minus one ten? Thanks, Grizzlebees. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't have pulled this without Stephen Carney buying the Pirates. So I appreciate that. Eight out of ninety nine. Luis Robert, Chris, and the White Sox. All right, we got Kyle Schorber for Ed and the Red Sox, 75, and another Luis Robert to 50 for Chris and the White Sox. You put the, oh, I see, I see. Under three and a half, still minus 135. Luis Robert, his his sort of knock is health, right? Because if he's healthy, then if he's healthy, then he could be he could potentially be a what a thirty thirty guy. He still has a lot of bases, doesn't he? Still a lot of bases. Has the ability to steal a lot of bases. Twenty twenty guy, thirty thirty guy, maybe. All right, next box. So we are, but we are halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen. About another 30, 40 minutes to go. Rex thinks that they should change the draft so that way the garbage teams gets the best picks. There should be a random aspect to it. That's exactly that's exactly how the draft works in most major American sports tracks. The worst teams will get the 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 best picks.
So teams with the worst records will usually get the number one overall pick. And then the best teams will get the low 30s, the 30s picks. Oh, you mean don't? You think they should change the draft so that way garbage teams don't get the... Wait, so what do you mean? Where, where garbage teams don't get the best picks? You're saying the best team should get the best picks? Or you just want it completely random? Ran so that everyone has an equal shot at number one. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's so entrenched in American sports that I don't think it's going to happen. Just like promotion and relegation. In soccer, that, that could never happen here in the United States. Hunter Green die cut, but that's kind of like what the uh, what the Premier League does. You know, the English Premier League just the best teams get the best players. Is Jackson Coart a fifteen? That might eliminate. That might be. That's right. That might be. That might eliminate some tanking if uh, if everyone team if every team had an equal shot at the number one pick. Freddie Freeman to 50. There's Miguel Cabrera to 75. Miggy going to Detroit, Steven. And there's Wander Franco, 34 out of 99. Nice ride and low insert. There's Jake Berger to 25 and another Wander Franco, not numbered. Emmanuel Rivera to 75. That'll be for Kansas City. That'll be for Jose. The Wander Franco will be for the Rays. Tim with the numbered one and now the base. Riding low insert. Jake Berger going to Chris and the White Sox. That's to 25. Yeah, I do like that Wrexham story. I haven't finished all the episodes of that, but... I gotta catch around that. I've heard the idea of floated the bottom four teams having to what like in basketball having to play a tourney or something to get the number one pick. I have heard that something like that. I think NBA wants to have like a mid season tournament. Um kinda like a cup match in, in like soccer, in Premier League soccer. Which I kinda like. I would why not just, just get rid of the All-Star game? <laughs> just get rid of the NBA All-Star game. I guess you can, you can keep like the skills and the three-point shooting and the dunk contest. Like, just keep that. And then just have like two weeks where the... Just have a two-week mid-season break. You know, Matt Chapman going to the A's, Daniel. Have a two-week mid-season break where the bottom four teams... You know, or or I guess, would you be able to do it in the middle of the season? Maybe at the end of the season.
end of the season, have the bottom four teams do a little tournament and that... Which would kind of be cool. Imagine if you had... Because, you know, you hear the story all the time. It's like, you know, here's like the NBA going into the playoffs and your superstars on the best teams are, are battling like a, a nagging ankle injury, a sore hammy, this and that. You do the post, you do the end of season tournament for the number one overall pick of the four worst teams or whatever. Have like a week, week and a half tournament. And then the winner of that tournament gets, you know, that. You have your superstars, they can rest before the playoffs. And then we got high quality playoffs. All the teams are rested, ready to go. That or have a 30-player home run derby. You know how long that would take? <laughs> Imagine 30 players in a home run derby field. Ooh. Would you televise that? That'd be how long would that take? The home run derby would like 10 players, I feel like, takes all night. It's like a three-hour TV experience. Yeah, I suppose if we got rid of the All-Star game, yeah. The whole weekend would be the home run derby. Yeah, the load management thing, that's not so it's not so good. You know, I always had this crazy idea for the NBA. Here's Javier Baez to 99. So what do, what do they play? They play 82 games. There's Jesse Winker to 10. What if the NBA, every team plays each other once, home and away. How many games would that be? Premier League does that, right? I can't math that. If it's 30 teams, right, and you're with 29 times two because you're not playing yourself, Is that 58 games? Or maybe 57? Because you don't play each other twice. You don't play each other home, you don't play yourself away. <laughs> so that's a lot fewer than 82 games. Then the expectation is players better play every single game. Right, and since it's well, there's one home and away, think about how important. Like this is the one time Giannis is coming into town, you got to go to that game. You know, hey, and you can advertise it. This is the one game, one time Giannis is coming into town. Time to come out to the arena, go watch Giannis and your home team. Far fewer games. Every ball, every basketball player, every superstar better be playing all 58 of those games. Ooh, Pete Alonso. Nice. It's going to go to Ryan Harold and the Mets. That's his Mets. There you go, Ryan. Five out of 25 as well. Nice. Yeah, I thought it was going to be an out of five for a second, but it's out of 25. Still good, still good. There he is. There you go, Ryan. Giancarlo Stanton to 99. Alec Manoa to 50. Yeah, that's one thing that I wish the that I wish would be a little more distinctive. Like the 
I think the out of five is a slightly more reddish color than that bronzish color. Maybe next year. Alec Manoa going to Toronto. That's for D'Lo. And Giancarlo Stan for Tristan and the Yankees. That's to 99. So that's kind of like my crazy idea. Right. So they so each team will only play like 57, 58 games. Add a couple playoff teams. And then you can still do the do the week and a half where they do the little mini tournament between the four teams, the four bottom teams before the playoffs start. Then you know who has number one overall pick. All right, so there's still some competitive basketball for the bad teams at the end of the year. Superstars get rested even more, right? And then they go into the playoffs. And hopefully we see a great product there. 99 out of 99. Wander Franco. There you go, Tim. Nice die cut. The die cuts look cool this year. I don't think they did the die cuts last year, did they? I don't remember. Sammy Long for the Giants. That's going to go to Chris Perrin. That's to 75. So that's my crazy, if I was commissioner king for the day and I can change anything about the NBA, I would just kind of do that. And shorter season is good too. I mean, it's like 82 games is, is, a, is a long one. And then there's no there's no back-to-backs. You know that one team is coming to your town that one time a year. You know, so now each individual regular season matchup becomes a little more intense. It's fewer season, fewer games to mess up, right? Because you, you know you got to have, you know, you got to be winning X amount, sixty percent of your games. If you want the number one seed or something like that. It's a lot, you know, it's a little bit more challenging when there's fewer games, fewer opportunities to make up those losses to get more competitive regular season games. It feels a little more NFL-y because it would just be like, you know, far fewer games. It's just Home and away. All right, yeah, and you get rid of the back to backs. You got more time in between. You know, you build all these days in between. And guess what? If you have 58 games and you're playing fewer games, more practice time in between, you're probably getting a cleaner product NBA wise, you know, where you can make a mid season adjustment. In your game because you can you have more practice time. Yeah, the spreads are crazy different, like on, on a back to back. You know, there's always that classic rule of thumb of like player coming player in like DFS, daily fantasy, player coming off a back to back on an NBA game. They kind of fade those players. So that's my idea. Now, why why it wouldn't happen? The owners don't want to lose those regular season games, even if you give them more playoff games. I mean, and I would just tell the owners, you just charge more for those 58 games. There's fewer games. You just divide up what you, but I don't know. I think the owners want that, want those regular season games. So I don't think, I think concessions unions too. I think that's a little tough. Concessions unions won't like that. Beers are already expensive enough, and so ticket prices are one thing, but it's it's not there is there's like a cap on what 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 a human will spend on a beer at a ball game. At some point, there'll be a revolt. So, there's a Bobby Wood Jr. That's going to go to the Royals. That'll be for Jose. Yeah, baseball, unders on getaway days, midweek getaway days. Yeah, I wonder how that will change with the uh, with some of the timing rules. Kind of don't mind that in the regular season, but I hope there will be no clock in the postseason. There's Matt Olson to 15. That'll be for the A's, D'Lo. 
Luke Williams to 75 for the Phillies. Uh, yeah, we got a Pete Alonso autograph uh, out of 25. Here's Juan Soto to 75, die cut for the Nats. Jeremy, Luke Williams going to the Phillies. That's for D'Lo and his fighting Phils. That's to 75. Juan Soto, that one was number two. Numbered as well. And a Julio Rodriguez riding low. Not numbered, but a cool insert. Tristan with the Mariners. The Juan Soto, Jeremy and the Nationals. One out of 50. Nice. Got that cool die cut. And the riding low insert. With baseball, would I would we do we want to trim games in baseball? Nice orange Bobby Witt Jr. Thirteen out of twenty five. Nice. That'll be for Jose and the Royals. I wouldn't mind rolling back the number of regular season games to what it was in the fifties. Something like that. Is that NT case break gonna break tonight? If it sells out, yeah. That's up to you. That's up to you guys in the chat. Not me though. If you sell it out, we'll do it. We got time for it. Got time on the schedule. All right, die cut wander for Tim. And the Wander Franco for Tim. You asked one of those math people who do betting algorithms, and he seemed to indicate that there's a small statistical number of lower scores on getaway days. Yes, because the umps want to get out of there too. Absolutely. Baseball betting, believe it or not, is, especially if you're a baseball fan, like I am, and you know, outside of my Dodgers, I'll, I'll watch just a lot of baseball in general. Um, and so, you know, if I'm going to watch these games, I may as well bet on them. Betting baseball is actually is actually quite fun, and it is the sport where a lot of and I'm not anywhere close to being a pro, a professional sports better, sports gambler, but the pros say. That that's where you can find the most edge and profits during a baseball season. You know, in the NFL, that's a that's a spread based game, so that's and those those lines are usually dialed in pretty pretty well by the by the books. They're really good at at making book with the NFL. <laughs> And there's a lot of parity in uh, in the NFL too, more than baseball and basketball. Basketball is another spread-based sport. That's also really difficult to bet on. Baseball is not. It's just wins and losses. And there's a lot of games, 162 games every year, and what, at maximum 15 games a night, right? It's hard to – and different starters every night. It's not like – you know, it's not like Mahomes is, you know, Mahomes is playing every week, right? You know, the main guy that touches the ball the most. Starters change every day. You know, offenses may not, but starters change every day, even for the best teams. So there's a lot of value on a, uh, I mean, I've heard some people, and this is not a, it's not an easy rule, but, uh, it's not an easy rule, but, um, I think like if you bet on 
and you'd have to do it every single day to, I think, make it work. But if you bet every single underdog in every baseball game throughout the entire season, then um, you may only win 30% of the time, but your return on investment would be plus. I don't know by how much, but you'd make a profit. Right, because of games like that. Three years ago, Verlander was pitching with the Astros against the Orioles. The Orioles' money line was like minus 400, and the O's won, and the O's were like plus 420. So for those of you not, who are not familiar with this sort of stuff, minus 400 means you'd have to lay, you'd have to pay $400 just to win $100 back. Right? Now, if, you're, if, if you've got even a little bit of business acumen, you realize, oh, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> I have to put $400 down just to win $100? That doesn't seem like a very, it's not. It's not a very big advantage. So, you know, when you see a number like that, sometimes you just kind of auto bet it, maybe not with a hundred bucks, but maybe like with $10. But like, you know, plus 420 means you only give the book $100 to try to win $420 back. Now you're thinking, oh, that's a much nicer return. It is. <laughs> Now, the likelihood of that happening obviously diminishes. You can even do the math at what, what the implied win percentage is per whatever the money line is. So I think at plus 420, that would imply the books are suggesting that the Orioles are going to win 20% of the time. But if you have a model that tells you, if you have a betting model that says, hey, we think the Orioles can win 35% of the time. And that 25% is wrong. Put a little money on the Orioles, see what happens. There's Chaz McCormick, 23 out of 25. That's for Houston. And that spices up the game a little bit. Again, I mean, as a baseball fan, I'm going to be watching these games anyway. So if I'm going to watch Orioles Astros on MLB.tv, you know, why not bet the underdog and see what happens? The hard part with baseball, though, and this happens to me every season. Like, April, May, I'll be really into it, you know, and I'll be, I'll be cranking out, grinding out numbers and building formulas and, and studying up, studying, uh, you know, whatever. Starters and numbers and crunch on it. And then it, it just becomes a slog, you know. It's like, it's like a whole other job. And then, you know, you end up not doing it as much and then... But it's fun, though. Is Jared Duran to 50? If you're into that sort of thing. Well, maybe in previous seasons, Grizzlebees. Not this year. You have to ask if there are any real degenerates in who bet no run first inning. Uh, I don't, I, I don't usually bet totals, but, um, there's Trey Mancini in 99 Orioles edition for Daniel and Jose Abreu to 75 White Sox edition for Chris Parent. I don't, but I know that a lot of people do have some fun with that. I see that with, um, with first quarter under in, um, in football. I know a lot of people like to bet that. Usually it's like, it's nine and a half. Sometimes 10, but usually teams don't really score a lot in the first quarter. I think there's some value in that. Same with baseball. Like, if, especially if you have good, if you have like top, I don't know, top 20 starter Delo, and especially if there's top 20 starters facing each other, why not, why not put a little bit on first run, you know, no inning, no run first innings? to 75 on that Tatis. I mean, that it might be, with, with two top 20 pitchers, it might be like minus 150, minus 120 maybe, minus 125 on a, on a first run, first inning no run. No run first inning, that is. But it could be a fun little sweat.
There was a... I listened to like a number of like gambling podcasts and stuff like that. And um, there was one year in hockey, I think it was for like some random team, Blackhawks or maybe it was a few teams, Blackhawks or Rangers. But it was consistently, it was, you could take first period unders and then you would be up like some ridiculous amount. It would be like, you know, your ROI would be plus 60% or something. By, by betting these teams first period uh, first period unders and usually under it's usually the line is like one and a half I think for a first period goal total Interesting. Uh, yeah, home run. Yeah, home run bets are pretty fun. Do you, do you Daniel? Do you do uh, baseball daily fantasy at all? I could never get that right. I'm no good at daily fantasy in general, but I just can't. I just can't get that, especially with a full field of players. I can usually, like, I can, you know, I'll win every once in a while if I just do, like, Lakers Daily Fantasy, just like Lakers Showdown, or like a Dodgers one, like if it's Dodgers so-and-so Showdown, you know, I've watched the Dodgers far more than any other team, so it's sort of easy to be like, oh, yeah, well, I know the hitting tendencies or something like that, so I can do, like, a Dodgers showdown Dodgers and another team kind of showdown lineup and if I bet a dollar maybe I'll get a dollar twenty five dollar fifty back or something like that <laughs> very low stakes for me on daily fantasy but getting home doing home run props you know there's far more value I feel like in that doing home run props there's Otani die cut Kettle Marte to 99 and Kevin Gossman to 75. Uh, Daniel, I don't know if you're a big reader. Do you read? Are you, do you enjoy the reading? If so, I just dropped a link in the chat to a book that I enjoyed uh, by Joe Pita, ex-Wall Street guy who ended up, um, you know, figuring out this algorithm for betting on baseball, but it's called Trading Bases, How a Wall Street Trader Made a Fortune Betting on Baseball. It came out 2014-ish. I don't know how much of that, some of that info might be a little dated, but. But um, also he's a Philly guy. He was, he was so that you, you definitely have to read it. He was uh, raised in Westchester, PA. And uh, was like, you know, suffered the heartaches. His bio says he suffered the heartaches of a 70s, 1970s Philly, being a 1970s Phillies fan. So he's a Philly dude, Wall Street guy. I think the, the book kind of mixes in a little bit of his own personal biography, which, which is interesting. I think what happened is, um, yeah, I think they got it on, on Audible. There's some numbers, some math involved. There's math in the book. So I'm... I might, might even recommend the, the, the paperback. So I think there's some numbers and charts that might be a little more, uh, a little easier to, to look at on, in book format, unless the Audible has the PDF attachments for that. Uh, John Lester, uh, St. Louis, Matthew Wood, but the story is, is that he was a New York uh, Wall Street guy. He was walking down the street. He was crossing the street in like Manhattan or something, a car whips around and uh, hits him, breaks his leg. And, um, and so I think, I think he originally lives in San Francisco, but he, he broke his leg and he couldn't, it was, it was so bad he was holed up in his apartment for months 
and he couldn't even go back home. He couldn't get on a plane to go back home. So he was just, so he was just there. His family's back in San Francisco. I mean, they could visit, but it was just like, so a lot of pain. And to, to manage the pain, he would watch West late night West Coast baseball. And then started using his Wall Street numbers background to, uh, to start hammering out formulas and stuff like that. For betting on baseball. Jorge with the uh, Padres. And then kind of made essentially a baseball like hedge fund or something like that, which initially didn't do well, but, but then ended up making himself and his friends a lot of money. There's Casey Mice in 99, but it's a, it's a really cool story. Apparently, he created a baseball hedge fund and had an astounding 41% return in his first year. But yeah, it's a, it's a good read. Uh, even, even with the math, I think it's, uh, he's a good writer. It's a pretty, pretty, breezy, pretty breezy book. And if you if you're already a degen, you know, but a smarter degen, then you, then you might want to check it out because there's some there's some principles that you can apply there. He's big on. Are you familiar with the Kelly criterion? Here's Luis Gill, twenty out of fifty. Yankees. That's for Tristan. I think if you're if you're talking to enough degens, that that word will have come up. I'm sure in some of your conversations. All right, nice Julio Rodriguez for Tristan in Seattle. Final box coming up. Yeah, do some research on that. That's an interesting, Kelly Criterion is an int interesting one. It's basically, it, it's essentially a, a formula on which to, I think finance folks use it. Um, but it's just to basically figure out, instead of betting set units, which is the recommended strategy, if you're feeling a little friskier, you can use a Kelly criterion to to calculate edges and then figure out how much you want to play off that edge. The example was if the Orioles being plus 420 or whatever, if that implies, I don't know if this is correct, but you can do the math on your own. But let's say, for example, the the uh, the line is plus 420 and that implies a winning percentage by Vegas as a 20% chance that the Orioles will win, right? For example, I'm just making up numbers, but if you have a model, let's say you, you can even use ESPN's win prediction percentage or 538.com's win percentage thing. And let's say, or Fangraphs has win, prob win percentages too. Take all those numbers together and let's say all those web searches saying, it's, uh, you know, Orioles actually have a 35% chance at winning. Right, which should be plus 300 instead of plus 450. You can already see how big that edge is. And then using the Kelly criterion, you can see how much you should bet. So if there's no edge, you're not, maybe you pass on that game. But if the edge is that big, then you're betting bigger on that game. So which is kind of a risky strategy if you think about it because you know, you're still talking about a bad team that's probably gonna lose more times than they're not. But if you hit, right, yeah, the bet size is always controversial, yeah, it is. But if you hit and you placed a bigger bet on that, on that risky play, okay, so that'll, that'll start, start making up for the other, other losses. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's interesting. It's worth looking up. And, and I think there's few, a few other sports that, that will really work uh, sports betting wise, but baseball is definitely one of them where you can apply that and get edges. Just because there's so many data points for baseball. And like fan graphs, ESPN, 538, there are a number of sites that just, that just give you that information for free. Good. Stick with us, Daniel, and I'll, I'm, sure, I'm sure once I start making official plays, in the break schedule, there's a Joe's Picks tab, and I'm sure that I'll that I'll re-explain all of this and, and all that. 
But for anybody who's just interested in the subject, and not, not you don't even have to be a gambler to enjoy the Trading Bases book. I'm not. This is not an affiliate link. I don't. Uh, I'm not getting paid to promote this book. But it's just personally a good read that I enjoyed, and I think even casual fans and casual betters might get something out of it too. Another Wander Franco. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not a tout, Dilo. Call one at one eight hundred Jaspi Picks. Joe Jaspi is five and two on the week. He'll give you one pick for free and for five dollars a day. He'll give you his best bet of the week. Baseball, football, basketball, college basketball. He's a winner, winner, winner. Don't buy picks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't buy picks. Don't fall. In. Thankfully, I, 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 I grew up with a, no, a number of other gamblers and... And we quickly learn horror stories and learn lessons of people who are like buy or call those tout services. And they Tristan with the Cubs. And uh, yeah, just don't do it. Mo, I mean, I'm sure there's some that are that are fine, but obviously they're touts because they're touting their service, and more often than not. I mean, their bets aren't public. You don't know what you don't know what their records are, and no one's actually tracking these guys because we're degenerates, right? We're not tracking the the, the tout and saying, "No, actually, he was three and five last week, not five and three. <laughs> but no one's actually doing that. And there's a uh, Bobachet. That's Bobachet going to Daniel. Here's Jeff McNeil for the Mets. That's for Ryan Harold. And the other thing is, some of the more shadier ones, <laughs> you'll call in, and they'll give you. They, they basically split the difference on the picks. They'll tell half the callers this team, half the callers another team. So that's why the other half, you know, then half the people will be like, no, this tout service works. It's definitely the best. Be smart, folks. Don't fall into that trap. Here's Wander Franco. I think the only thing I pay for now in that re in that world is uh, is Action Network. Sixty five to seventy five. Lance Lynch, Chicago White Sox. Chris Perrin. It's hilarious how many times they say the number. Why is it hilarious, Rex? I'll tell you what, Rex. Before you make fun of that, in the radio industry, especially in advertising, they tell you that. Um, that the optimal times to repeat information is three times to have that settle in uh, someone's head to remember the number. Why do I do you, that's why I say the website all the time. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. Where do you go for personal breaks? At Jaspies Breaks on Instagram Live. That's at Jaspies Breaks on Instagram. Jason Jasper on at Jaspies Breaks on Instagram.com <laughs> slash Jaspies Breaks at Jaspies Breaks. But yeah, it's been scientifically, at least the advertisers have said it's scientifically proven that, that you have to, that three times is the optimal number for information retention. Bobby Wood Jr. die cut. That goes to the Royals, Jose. So it's not hilarious, Rex. It's smart. It's marketing. It's advertising. That's how we get you to buy stuff. Yeah, my, my, welcome to KJSB, 105 Point JSB, playing nothing but the hits, breaking nothing but the hits. All right, nice break, ladies and gentlemen. Got all that nice stuff. We got the Bobby Wood Jr. to 25, the Julio Rodriguez inserts, Matt Olson was to 15. Got the Wander Franco, green die cut, 99 out of 99. Autos are few and far between. Pete Alonzo auto is your auto. Five out of 25, nice low number there. I think one of these was numbered. Yeah, that Wander was numbered. It's got the Torkelson. Wow, about this? There was a second autograph. I forgot about it because it was a redemption. Mike Trout autograph. That was pretty nice. Bobby Wood Jr. Green. 
And the Cab right, the Cabrian Hayes, one of one. Almost forgot about that. Great stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Good convo. Fun times. Fun break. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.